Okay, tonight is August the 23rd of 2025. I'm going to um, show you something here that you might like. I saw a video earlier of a good gentleman making, having some fun, talking about how to splice coax. What if you don't have the PL259s in a, in a you know, double female barrel and everything to do it? Can you just solder them together? Well, we're going to find out what kind of uh, anomalies that might uh, put in it. Okay, first of all, we got a square wave generator out here. Puts out a square wave with uh, rise time of about a nanosecond. This is a little differentiator. It's an RC circuit. There's lots of different kinds. You can make them. Uh, see, this one's even got a variable capacitor in it. The capacitor is something like in the range of, say, 5 to 25 picofarads. And the resistor can be anything between like 50 ohms and a 1K. This one happens to be a 1K. The one that I'm using over there is 50 ohms, I believe. Made it many years ago. Anyway, it has, it has three connections. One goes to the scope. One goes from the generator, and then the other one goes to the load. Well, I've got a load on it right now, which is a piece of... Uh, it's a bunch of coax, okay? It's just all wound up. And the end of it is uh, actually right here. And what you'll see, I've got a scope in on the, what I'm going to do here in just a minute. You, you'll see when it changes what I'm going to end up doing is putting these two ends together. Well, actually, I can put it right here around. And, and, and watch, watch the scope. I'll, I'll, I'll move in on it real close. And you see, this is the, out, this is the pulse that we're generating, and this is the reflected pulse right here. If I lengthen it, See how the pulse moved way out here? I'll unplug it again. See, now we're measuring a shorter piece of coax. Um, this is what we've got to do. Okay, but you see, what we're really doing in this experiment is we are comparing this right here, this splice, to uh, a splice we're going to make right here with this, hope I don't knock the camera over here, with these pieces of coax right here mechanically spliced together, you know, with a little, a little crimp connector. Hard to do they looking at a camera. We're going to squish it together. I'll, I'll show you some steps along the way. You know, put this in there. That's how we'll center the other one. And then we'll insulate it real good and then we'll connect the shields together you know in something respectable it won't be the best in the whole wide world but it'll be pretty good it'll be okay okay well what we got to do now i gotta i gotta scope in really good right here so you can see exactly the point that we're measuring the point that we're measuring is right there where that second pulse is right here now when i add this piece of coax. And I'm going to add this piece of coax. See how it moved out there? Well, what we're looking for is the anomaly that uh, we create by that splice. And we can actually see it right there. It's the tiniest little nuance. Uh, we can actually see that discontinuity right there. You can see that impedance lump. I'm sure you, you can see what I'm talking about. If I get it any closer, it might not even focus. There you go. That's close enough. So I'll unplug it again, and, and you'll see that where that right-hand pulse comes back to that exact point right there. See there? I'm doing this just so you can see what a perfectly legitimate joint. Let's zoom back out. Like this looks like. That's the anomaly. That's the anomaly that it puts in the transmission. A pretty insignificant. On the other hand, think about this. These little connectors are good ones, you know. Or five dollars a piece or more, plus another five here for this. For the, for, the, for the really good stuff. So you're talking about a 15 or $20 splice. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do here tonight, 
is I'm going to go back to here. I'll have to come back in just a few minutes, of course, after I do this, because I'll have to be fumbling for quite a while. And I'm going to splice these two pieces together that I just showed you. And uh, right here, with this, it, okay, you get the picture. This will be crimped and soldered, and then this will be um, this will be taped up really good. So it'll be something like you know something that we hope will work, and then we'll see what kind of an anomaly we get out of a connection like this. Okay, I don't know what it's going to look like. I think it's going to look pretty good. Probably won't be quite as good as the other one, but we'll see. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, here's what I've done so far is I I put that crimp connector on and soldered it and I wrapped it with uh, this Teflon tape for pipe thread tape for what it's worth, I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to, I guess. And then I'm going to I'm going to wrap the shield with this copper tape so that we got a good connection between the two. Okay, I just want you to be able to see inside what I'm doing here. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's see where this goes now. Well, here it is. It's quick and dirty, you know. Crimped and soldered center conductor. Wrapped it with a Teflon tape. I wrapped it with black tape too, I guess. I don't know. And then connect the shields together with this. Somebody's going to say, well, that uh, stick them on the, this copper tape doesn't make good connection. Well, I assure you it does. I've used this stuff for lots of years. This stuff comes in uh, all kinds of uh, lengths and uh, widths. This is great stuff. Okay, so now let's plug it in and we'll see. Now this is a different length, so it's going to be different. It's going to look a little different. Now if I short the ends of it right here, I think you've already seen this. See how it inverts over there on the scope? Okay, we got to get into the scope again because that's what this... That's what this is all about. Okay, see, well, I'm shorting it by touching it here. Well, you can see the end of the wire. This is uh, bolts going out. This is the end of the wire. Okay, I'm not to get really weird about it, but there it is right there. And you can tell the end of the wire by shorting it. That's an open, and that's a short. See how it inverts? And I'll show you here in a minute on the other piece of coax. I didn't want to. I didn't want to waste a connector by putting another uh, 259 on this. But here's the anomaly right here. You can see it in there. And it's got things shorted here. I'm making a good connection. Okay. Behave. <laughs> well, actually, I've got some bad connection here. I don't think that my connection is as good as it ought to be. Holy man. Well, when the connection is good, boy, I have a... well, this is just not behaving right, is it? This is not doing what I want it to do. There you go. I can make it just be still. Well, there's the anomaly right there. I believe you can see it quite well. Yeah. It's not too bad, huh? That's it. It's a little bit worse. Not quite as good as the uh, PL259s in the barrel, but it's usable. You, you know, you'd probably want to go some, to some extra lengths to tape it up, put some shrink tubing over it, and all that kind of stuff, but you could splice it that way. Okay? It works. That's, it's not as bad as we might think. Okay, let's zoom back out. Now let's do just a little bit more fun measuring coax and TDRs and all that kind of stuff. I love this stuff. Okay, we'll forget about that. We, that that's proven the point. It can be done. Um, you probably want to spend a little bit more time on it than I did. Make it a little bit better. But if we put... Um, um, I'm going to show you something here. I'm just going to get my uh, connector off. 
let's put this length that, that we have back up here with, with the good connectors on it and everything. I'm going to slow it down because it's a lot longer. It's an, as it's anomaly right there. If you want to look at that anomaly again, now we got the other, we've, we've seen this one. Let's look at it once more. Sorry for the wiggling, I just gotta do it. There it is. See, it, it's pretty tiny. It is better than the other one. But there it is. Okay. But if you want to know the actual impedance of the coax, then you need some sort of a variable resistor. Here's one right here. Here's some I've made many long years ago. You can see it's already turned brown and everything. Let's see, where's the end of the wire? Well, we've got to get a, get a couple of, uh, get a couple of uh, thing the jobbers here. Oh my goodness. I was going to be so complicated. Uh, I'll get there in a minute. Sorry for all the fumbling here. I want to get a B and C connector on this one I'm trying to do. Well, actually, I don't want a B and C connector. I'm going to make one of these. Okay, I'm getting there. See, so what I've done is I've set my jig up here so that I can connect it to that PL259 right here. Plug this PL259 in. Like that. Now that I have a variable resistor here, you see what I can do over there? Let's go back in. This is good stuff to know. And we're looking out, out here at the end of the wire right here. What we want is to make that lump go away. See, that's too high an impedance. That's too low an impedance. But right, right there is about as good as we can get. And then, got to do all this zooming in and out. And then if we look at our little test jig here, it's right on 50 ohms. It tells us that the impedance of this coax is 50 ohms. Now inside this little, uh, this little guy right here, I have um, I have the potentiometer mounted on a piece of plastic like comes out of maybe a Tektronix oscilloscope or something where there's high voltage on it because you want to as best you can you want to suspend the, I can't take the screws out too easily you want to suspend the pot above the metal so it's floating as best you can with one connection here and the other connection to the chassis. So as you got the least amount of L and C, you know, to screw things up. But look at that, it's right on 50 ohms. So it's pretty cool. You can do that for 75 ohms. You can do it for, uh, I made some bunch of jigs a long time ago, even to measure uh, uh, UTP, unshielded twisted pair stuff. And it all works. Unshielded twisted pair, like you use for your Ethernet stuff, is 100 ohms. Well, anyway, I guess that uh, makes the point that I was uh, wanting to make that you can put it together. <laughs> You'd want to do a little bit better job than me. Oh, let me show you one other thing. Okay, if we look at this, we got to go back in just a little bit closer, and then I'll have to come back out. Okay, let's just look at this. And we set this so we can measure this exactly. Right there. Let me say that table is 62.72 nanoseconds. Well, that's actually twice the length of the cable because that pulse on the right is the length that the pulse traveled to get to the end of the cable and then reflected back to the beginning. But there's a real simple little formula for it that tells you the length. Okay. Length of your cable. And here it is, the distance is equal to the time, what we just measured, times the velocity, uh, the speed of light, 
I just used 3E8, 300 million, times the velocity factor, and this is uh, LMR4, which is about 0.8. You divide that by 2. Let me show you how that works. It really, really works. So you can measure your, uh, you can measure your cable. Here's a little 15C uh, app for iPhone. I've probably already done it. Well, it says that it's, uh, what's that, 62.72. You put in 62.72 E9 change sign, and you store that. That's T. Now, C is 3E8. Multiply that. Then the velocity factor is about 0.8. Then you divide it by 2. And you say it's seven and a half meters, and that's actually what it is. You can convert that to feet or inches or whatever makes you happy, but it actually works. Or you can have, or if you know the length, you can zizz the little equation around a little bit and determine its uh, velocity factor, which is nowadays either going to be the hard stuff, which is like 0.66, or the, uh, the foam, which is going to be around 0.8. So anyway, in a pinch, you can, uh, you can actually splice your table together if you have to. and Just do a little bit better job than I did, and I think it'll be just fine. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.